Hey guys, my name is David and I will be your Linode developer advocate for this video. In fact, this video is kind of part of a self, a semi self hosted series that I partnered up with Linode to create. Basically the idea is if you want to get your feet wet in trying to self host things and learn things like Docker, sometimes using a third party software like Linode is a great way to do that. And in fact, if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, head down to the description where you'll find a link to get hundred dollars in free credit over on Linode for 60 days. In this video, we're going to take a look at a Docker container called Snippet Box, which is a cool way to store the, the kind of code snippets that you use regularly in an organized way in a Docker container. Uh, it's super easy to set up. Of course, uh, you can set this up on a domain if you'd like to do that. One thing I will recommend is you don't have to watch the entire series, but definitely go back and watch at least the first video of this series. If this is your first video or first time watching a video in this series, that first video will kind of get you caught up to speed as far as what we're doing in this video. So with all of that said, let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at how easy it is to get Snippet Box installed in Docker. So to start things off, we're going to head over here to the GitHub repository for Snippet Box. And if we take a look right here, it says Snippet Box is a simple self-hosted app for organizing your code snippets. It allows you to easily create, edit, browse, and manage your snippets in various languages. And that's that's basically all we're gonna do here is get this set up. Again, this is gonna be super, super easy to set up. In fact, if we scroll down on this page, <clears throat> We'll see the Docker Compose that they recommend using. However, uh, because we're going to put this on a domain name, I'm gonna change this up just a little bit because we, in a previous video, we set up Nginx Proxy Manager as our reverse proxy uh, that allows us to, to route traffic to different ports in different containers, uh, as well as uh, handle all of our SSL certificates for this setup. So what I've done is I've actually taken this Docker Compose right here and modified it just a little bit. In fact, let me pull that up. So this is the Docker Compose that we're going to use here. Again, it's a version three. The service under here will be snippet box. The image will be uh, the image for this. We're gonna use the latest tag on that. We're gonna give it a container name. Um, we've also got a volume here. Uh, and if you've watched the previous videos in this series, you know that for the sake of this, I like to store this in home slash Docker slash basically whatever the container name is just for easy categorization and management later. Uh, we've got ports 5,000 here. Uh, basically you can change this first port 5,000 to whatever whatever you'd like it to be. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. There's no need to change it, so we're gonna leave it alone. Uh, below that, we've got a network of Nginx proxy manager underscore default. And basically what this means is uh, because we've already created a, a, a network, a Docker network in that first video, uh, this is how we're going to connect to it. Uh, so we've got that uh, right here and we've got a restart policy under here unless stopped. That's pretty standard stuff. And then below here, we've actually uh, redeclared uh, that network saying, hey, this is an external network. Basically, this is a network that's already been created on our server. Uh, and that's where that external equals true comes from. So that's basically all we need for this to work. So we're going to head over to our uh, IP address with port 9000 at the end of it. Uh, we can actually see that this 131 is the IP address of our Linode tutorial uh, setup here. So that's what we're going to use. Uh, what I'm going to do next is uh, go over here to stacks. Here we can see we've got a few different stacks in here. I'm going to click on add a stack. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, snippet box like so. And then I'll come back over here to my notepad grab that, just paste that in there. And that's basically all we need to do for that. So what I'll do is I will just uh, scroll down to the bottom and click on deploy the stack. As long as we don't get an error message, we should be good to go. It looks like we're not going to get an error message. So we'll give this a second to deploy and then we'll be up and running here in just a moment. Okay, so here we are just a moment later. What I wanna do is open up snippet box right here. We can see that it's running. If we wanted to, we could take a look at the logs and it says that the server is working on port 5000 in production mode, so that's good. We're glad to see that. So let's go ahead and click on this published port right here. Okay, so now that we have our snippet box up and running, let's actually take a look at how to add snippets. So like it says right here, go to the editor and create once. We'll do that. And we're gonna say, we're gonna call this mass rename files. Um, how to rename lots of files in Windows. This is something I actually use for a little thing I do on the side. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna call this um, and I'm not even sure what what this is. Uh, I'm gonna call it PowerShell. I don't know what else to call it, but there we go. And we can call this um, PowerShell and rename uh, Windows. We're just gonna add 
some different um, some tags here, um, and we'll call this uh, CM, CMD for command prompt. And then I've just got this over here, and we're just gonna paste or copy that and paste that in there. Let me make sure that I've got, oops. Oh, I don't know why I added that, but there we go. Um, so just uh, for the documentation, we can uh, just uh, run this in uh, PowerShell to rename uh, files in a given directory. And we'll create the snippet like so. And here we can see, uh, now we've got that. If we click on home, uh, we can we can search if we want and just say, uh, let's, just, let's just look for that. Um, oops, let's try rename. There we go, mass rename files, just like so. Uh, we can view it if we want to, just like that. Uh, we can come over to our snippets and see uh, kind of what we've got going on here. We can see this, we can copy the code. Uh, let's do one more just, uh, just to demonstrate this uh, update portainer. So we're actually going to uh, have a few different uh, snippets in here. We're going to go to editor, like so. Uh, we're going to uh, update uh, portainer. I'm gonna skip that. We're gonna do uh, just CMD or SSH is how we're gonna do that. We're gonna say portainer update, update uh, portainer like so. And then there's our, our first bit of snippet code. Uh, we've got a second one there, oops, like so. We're just gonna run, uh, oops, we're gonna do one more like that. And then uh, we can just do all of this down here for the documentation and click on create snippet. And again, we've got our snippets up here. We've got the documentation down here. We can copy the raw URL. Uh, we can delete it, we can edit it. We can just copy the code. Of course, you can do this with basically any of the different uh, code snippets you've got and add your own languages to them and notes and documentation and all of that kind of stuff using snippet box. So now that we've taken a look at how snippet box works, let's head back over to Linode and set up our subdomain. Uh, over here on the left-hand side, we've got uh, our list of, of, of uh, links. I'm going to click on domains. We're going to go to tutorialserver.xyz. At least that's what I'm going to do for uh, what I'm doing here. So we're going to go ahead and add an A record here. We're going to click this. Uh, we're going to type in snippet like so and paste in the IP address. Make sure there's no spaces or anything like that in there. Oops like so, and then we'll click save. And here we are back over on our Nginx proxy manager dashboard here. Uh, what I wanna do is uh, head over here to SSL certificates. I'm going to add an SSL certificate and click on let's encrypt. I'm gonna type in snippet dot uh, tutorial server dot XYZ and hit and then hit enter and click test. There we go. So now our server is reachable and creating certificates should be possible. So we'll go ahead and click on close. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just, oops, we're not gonna use a DNS challenge. We're going to agree to the terms and click save. We'll give this just a moment to generate the SSL for us. Okay, so there we are. Now we've got our snippet.tutorialserver.xyz SSL set up and ready to go. So now we can come back over to hosts, click on proxy host, click on add a proxy host. We're gonna type in a snippet.tutorial server.xyz and hit enter. Our scheme, I will believe it is HTTP because we don't have an SSL inside the uh, the Docker container, so we'll leave this alone. Our forward hostname slash IP. So we come back over to here, we can see that snippet box is right up here at the top and the IP address is 172.18.06. So we're gonna come back and put that in there and then port 5000 like so. We can cache our assets and block common exploits. Come over here and then find snippet.tutorialserver.xyz under the SSL tab. We can check all of the boxes here and click save. And then if we open this up, we can see that we've got a little lock up here that tells us that our SSL is good. We're on our domain. However, we still have this problem of um, there's no authentication on here. So let's fix that next. Okay, so what I wanna do is actually grab my IP address. This is not, I'm running on a VPN. This is not my home's IP address. What I wanna do though is copy that and then come back over to Nginx Proxy Manager and go to Access Lists. I'm gonna create a new access list and I'm gonna call this uh, IP. And then I want to say, uh, satisfy any. The authorization, oops, the access will be allow that IP address and deny everything else. So we're gonna go and click on save. So now we've got our access list created. What I wanna do is come over to our host, go to our proxy host, open our proxy host for our new domain here and switch this to IP and click save. And if I click this, 
everything here works, so let, now let's change up my IP and see if we get a different result. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and refresh. Now I've got a different IP address here. If I refresh, I get forbidden. That's awesome. So that means that everything is working the way we want it to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back. So just to again, to verify that it is working, what I wanna do is open this up, click edit, change the access list to publicly available, click save and refresh, and now we're back up and running. So that's how easy it is to get Snippet Box up and running in a Docker container on Linode using uh, Nginx Proxy Manager as our reverse proxy to handle um, our, our SSLs, but to also handle some authentication because this app doesn't actually have any auth authentication built into it. Uh, so hopefully you found this video helpful and interesting. If you did find it helpful or interesting, do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up. That really does help out the channel quite a bit. Again, you'll find links to everything in the description down below, including uh, a link that will get you $100 in free credit to check out Linode free for 60 days. So with all of that said, I want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me and I will talk to you in the next video.